Hi, everybody. Just before we begin our service today, a reminder that we'll be having a congregational meeting at 10 o'clock today. You should have received uh, instructions for how to access the meeting by Zoom. We'll be electing a new slate of elders and deacons as we gather together briefly at 10 o'clock this morning, Sunday, the 26th. Good morning and welcome to worship today at the First Presbyterian Church of San Luis Obispo. My name is John D'Elia, I'm the interim pastor here. I'm glad that you're joining us for this time of praising and praying and listening to God's word read and proclaimed and even just sitting in silence as we offer our lives and offer our worship today to Jesus Christ who has loved us, who died for us, who rose for us and loves us still. Welcome to worship this morning. We have some announcements about uh, the day. Uh, there are beautiful flowers here. Uh, there's a white rose today for Ben McCree, who passed away this past week. Uh, there's a yellow rose uh, to celebrate a new baby and grandbaby in our congregation, Stephen Michael Gomez, born to Michelle and Chris Gomez, Mike and Dee Dee Patrick's new grandchild. So we rejoice with them. And then the two bouquets today, are given by Craig and Susan Updegrove in celebration of their 40th wedding anniversary. So we grieve with those who grieve and we rejoice with those who rejoice as we gather for worship today. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift that it is to be your community of faith here in this place. We ask that you bless this hour as we worship you, as we listen for your word, and as we are challenged to be your disciples. We pray this in your son's name, amen. I'm Nellie Beecher, a member and a deacon here at the First Presbyterian Church, San Luis Obispo. Please join me in the call to worship taken from Psalm 9. Let us worship the name of our wonderful God. The Lord reigns over all creation. 
The voice of God creates all things. Nothing exists without the creative power of the Lord. May God give strength to all who worship here today. May the Lord bless us with peace. Please join me in our opening prayer. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, we rejoice to be as one in your great human family on earth and in heaven. Invited by you into your holy presence to worship and adore you as the beloved people of God. We adore you, Creator God, who has made each of us according to your plan. We come from far and wide with hope and concern to hear your call. We draw near to you, O oh God, even from this distance. Help us to love you as you love, so that all might be welcome in your community of faith, so that the whole world may know your heart. We look upon you, tender God, the God who keeps loving us despite our failures. We bow our hearts and minds in humility, trusting in your forgiveness, leaning on your promise of welcome. We need you, loving God, now more than ever. We come to you with a wish to play our part in your mission. We ask that by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we may love you and magnify your holy name through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome to worship. My name is Sheridan Liao. I hope you're having a great weekend. We just want to welcome you to join us and sing along with Holy is the Lord and It Is Well. We stand and lift up our hands. strength 
We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He. And together we
Please join me now in the prayer of confession. Sometimes we do not listen to one another and we cause pain and frustration for the people we love. For this we pray, forgive us, Lord. Sometimes we are angry, we say and do things that wound and prolong conflict. For this we pray. Forgive us, Lord. Sometimes we do not help or care for one another in the way Jesus showed us. For this we pray. Forgive us, Lord. For the times we have failed in our love for one another, and when we have forgotten that God is always waiting for us to make us whole, we take these moments in silence to offer our own prayer of confession. Dear friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hi there, I would like to spend some time with the children. Today, we are talking about forgiveness. And that's kind of a hard subject because there are so many layers to forgiveness. So I'm gonna tell you a story and see if that helps. So there's this family and they had three daughters. And the oldest daughter finally got invited to her very own birthday party and she was so excited but her mom told her she could only go if she took her younger sister. Well, this didn't make the oldest daughter happy at all, and she begged and pleaded, please don't make me take her. But then finally, she had to take her. And of course, her sister was very ornery the whole time they were at the party and had to win every game. And so the older sister was kind of embarrassed, but was excited at the end because she knew there was a goodie bag waiting there just for her with a great big green lollipop. And she could not wait. But guess what? When she got there, her younger sister had already taken the lollipop and eaten it. She was not happy. So a few years later, the middle daughter finally got her invitation to her very own birthday party and she was so excited and her mom told her she could go but she has to take her younger sister and she was like mom no way I can't do that but she insisted so the middle daughter took her younger sister to the birthday party same kind of thing, she was pretty ornery and causing some trouble and had to win every game. So when it came to the end, the middle sister was so excited because she knew there was gonna be a goodie bag there for her with a great big purple lollipop and she could not wait. So when she went to get her goodie bag, guess what? The littlest sister had already taken out the lollipop and she was not happy, and they started fighting over it. So just at that time, the oldest sister showed up and saw what was going on, and she remembered her experience from the birthday party she had to take her sister to. So she decided to forgive her and help the other two sisters learn how to forgive each other. So she took the lollipop and she broke it into three pieces that they could share equally. So that was a lesson on how to forgive and how to learn from it and to move forward. So there was a lot of layers of forgiveness going on there and that's what Jesus asks of us, 
to forgive each other because he and God so freely forgive us no matter what we have done. But we do have to remember to not only ask for forgiveness, but to learn from it and learn by it and live differently from being forgiven always. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for giving us lollipops to share and for learning how to do that and for learning how to forgive each other, learning from our mistakes and moving forward. We are so grateful that you forgive us always, no matter what we do. In your name we pray, amen. Good morning. Our first scripture reading today comes from Psalm 103, verses 1 through 12. Listen for the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he har harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. The word of the Lord. As we continue in worship this morning, let's take a little time and present our lives to God in prayer. Join me. Gracious and loving God, forgiving God, redeeming God, God of renewal and restoration, we worship you with our whole hearts today. We are here because you have touched each one of our lives in a special way. Even as we are feeling strong or feeling weak, as we are grieving or rejoicing, we are here because you have loved us and we want to gather even in this electronic way and express our love for you back. God, we thank you for the ways that you sustain us, for the ways you comfort us in grief, for the ways that you give us the energy we need to rejoice and serve in your name. We are so thankful as we gather for worship today. But God, we're also aware of suffering and grieving and struggling that goes on outside the walls of this building. God, we pray for the continuing path toward reconciliation in our society. We pause right now in the midst of all that we are doing and ask for you to bring the miracle of reconciliation uh, between races, between religions, between political parties, between family members, and between friends. God, we ask that you would be the Prince of Peace in each one of our lives and in this community and in this nation. God, as we also live through this pandemic, we remember those who are ill. We ask for a special blessing on those who are caring for them. We pray for wisdom and diligence among those who are looking for a cure. And as always, we want to remember those who are feeling afraid and alone during this time of separation and distance. God, be with us as we continue to learn new ways to be your church, as we continue to learn new ways to be your disciples. God, as we pray all of these things, we lift them up to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to pray and whose words we share now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. No 
Please join me as we state what we believe. We believe in God whose love is ever constant and steadfast, even when we are not. We believe in Jesus the Christ who walked among us, who was betrayed and forgave, and who died that we might live. We believe in the Holy Spirit, ever present with us to comfort us as well as urge us forward in the name of Christ. We believe in the church as the place where we are loved as we are and still gently encouraged to grow. We believe that we are called to be the church, to love people more than they deserve because Christ so loves us. We believe in the miracle of life and in the life everlasting. Amen. Stories about forgiveness can be surprising for us. One of them sticks out to me because it sparked a debate that continues to this day. Last year, a police officer in Dallas shot and killed an unarmed black man. She was tried and convicted of second degree murder. And at the end of her trial, the brother of her victim silenced the courtroom with a very, uh, just a remarkable request. He said, I don't know if this is possible, but can I give her a hug, please? Their embrace was caught on camera and shown on news and shown on social media. It sparked a conversation about people who were marveling at his uh, humility and forgiveness and his capacity for grace for this woman. But also there was anger that he would dare to forgive someone who had taken yet another young black life. It was a dramatic moment. The mom of the young man who said it, which is also the mom of the young man who had been killed, she summed it up beautifully when she said publicly to her younger son, regardless of the views of the spectators, walk with God always. Forgiveness is for the forgiver, and it doesn't matter what the forgiven does with it. Forgiveness stories are surprising, right? We've been in this series and we'll continue this week and into next week about what it means to be weak, what it means to show weakness as an expression of our discipleship as uh, Christians and followers of Jesus. The qualities of being a disciple of Jesus look like weakness in our culture. Repentance, mercy, Gratitude, these might make you a nice person, but our culture doesn't teach those as the path to victory or success. And yet, these qualities of weakness are a part of the foundation of living life as Jesus taught us and as he modeled for us. And so today we turn to forgiveness, another quality of weakness that's central to the gospel. Giving up our right to revenge, our right to justice, giving up the power that we have over people who have done something to us. Forgiving each other is a part of the biblical story from Genesis right up into this very moment. It's in Genesis 12 that God lays out a plan for the rest of human history. God will bless his people. He tells this to Abram as he makes a covenant with him. He says, I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and you will be a blessing to all the nations. I will show you blessing and you will share that blessing with the rest of the world. At its core, the main point of the Bible is simple. God loves us, and God calls us to love the world. In the New Testament, we hear Jesus say those very same things, love God and love your neighbor. You see what I mean? We can complicate it all we want, and we do. Our church history, 2,000 years of it, is filled with complications on that very basic teaching. In the end, though, the whole story of being a follower of Jesus is about God loving us and us loving God back and sharing that love with all the nations of the earth. That's the point of our text this morning. From Paul's letter to the Colossians, 
verses, uh, chapter 3, verses 12 to 14. Listen for the word of God this morning. Paul writes, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Paul's letter to the Colossians was written to a city in what is now Turkey. They were being challenged by other religions in that whole region. Uh, there was a, a competition of faiths trying to uh, exert their own truths and influence that community. And so this letter is part theology. It's part what we need to know about what Christ is like. And the other part teaches ethics. It's what do we do now that we believe uh, in what Christ is like. Our passage that we read today, those three simple verses, are in the shape of a triangle, which is a, a tool that Paul uses in a lot of his writing. It's in the shape of a triangle. The point is in the middle, and the first and third verses are parallels of each other. Listen to the verses again. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, Clothe yourselves with compassion and kindness and humility and gentleness and patience. And then in the middle, bear with each other. Forgive one another if any of you has a grievance. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And then in the third verse, it goes back to that idea of love at the center of all of this. And over all of these virtues, put on love, which binds them together in perfect unity. So what does that mean for us? What does it mean for us to uh, read these passages and learn something meaningful for our lives about what it means to forgive one another? Three things for us to understand in our text today. First, we forgive from a, a posture and a position of knowing that God loves us. We forgive as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved. It's God love, God's love for us that gives us the strength to do the weak thing, to forgive each other. Second, we forgive not just because we've been loved, but we forgive because God has already forgiven us. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, Paul writes. But that's not easy, right? We're not God. It's hard to forgive as God forgives. God's forgiveness is cosmic. Mine is this piddly little thing that doesn't work all the time. It's hard to forgive like God does. Nick Cave is a rock singer. He's been around writing music for more than 40 years. Now, he might seem like an unlikely person to go to for wisdom about forgiveness, but a fan wrote him a letter saying that someone he loved had deeply wounded him and that he was struggling with how to forgive that person. And Nick Cave wrote that young man a letter back. And in that letter, he said in part, So, Mel, how do you forgive the one you love for doing something truly terrible? I would try to see the idea of forgiveness as an act of insubordination a non-compliance to the forces of malevolence, a recognition that you will not be defined by the offense that has been inflicted upon you. See forgiveness as a gift, not to the other person who's committed the injury, but to yourself in the form of self-protection. The sooner you start the process, the less time you may spend imprisoned by resentment and bitterness, hopefully, moving toward a more resilient self. What an amazing letter to write from a rock star to a random fan who asked him a question. Listen to the words he uses to describe forgiveness and the radical nature of what it means to forgive someone. He calls it an act of insubordination, a non-compliance to the forces of malevolence, 
a recognition that you will not be defined by the offense that has been inflicted on you. And I love that he ends it with this payoff. The sooner you start the process of forgiveness, the less time you may spend imprisoned by resentment and bitterness, hopefully moving toward a more resilient self. Isn't that amazing? Forgiveness, forgiving someone, isn't just about letting them walk all over us. Forgiving is breaking the rules of the culture. Forgiving is refusing to give in to evil. Forgiving is being defined by the God who loves us and forgives us every single day instead of being defined by the people who have wounded us. And finally, that brings us in our text to the heart of the promise that's on offer for all of us as we seek to be Christ's disciples. Forgiveness binds all things together in perfect unity. And couldn't we all use a little perfect unity these days? In our nation that is so divided by anger and fear and cruelty, in our communities where we're learning the stories of people who've been abused at the hands of police and suffered injustice in the courts and through the economic systems. In this church, where conflict has wounded the hearts of some of our sisters and brothers, this church, which has accomplished so much over the years, but still has a way to go. Couldn't we all enjoy a little perfect unity right now? The three verses in our text this morning give us a roadmap for bringing, a, bringing us a little closer to that perfect unity that Christ offers. Listen to the words again. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion and kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. My prayer for us, as we reflect on what it means to be bound together in holy weakness, just like Jesus taught us, is that we'll learn to forgive. That we'll reach out and offer forgiveness to someone who has wounded us or wronged us somehow. The sooner you start the process, Nick Cave's letter said, the less time you may spend imprisoned by resentment and bitterness hopefully moving toward a more resilient self. Make that your homework between now and next Sunday. Bring a little perfect unity into your corner of the world this week. And maybe you'll discover that you're more resilient than you thought. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
As we close our worship today, let me invite you to find someone this week where you can extend the gift of forgiveness. Remember that it is a release for you. It is freedom for you to be defined by the God who loves you and not by the offense that has been committed against you. Take a moment and find someone this week that you might be able to forgive. Now let's join together in our declaration of mission. Friends, what is our mission? Our mission is to glorify Jesus Christ and to be instruments of God's healing, reconciling, life-giving presence in the world. And now as we close, hear this benediction. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us each and every day. Amen. Go in peace.